So today's review is of the Odyssey LCD 2C. This is a planar magnetic headphone that retails at, I believe, 700 US dollars. Might be 800 now, um, I have to double check on that. But that makes this headphone not a cheap headphone at all. So how does this stack up against similar competition? Let's find out. Starting off with the build itself. This is a typical Odyssey build, which means it is very well built. Starting off with the headband, we have a piece of spring steel. And um, this spring steel can be bent slightly uh, to fit different shaped heads. And if you want a bit more clamp or a bit less clamp, you can do that too. You also have a nice, really nice suspension strap. Um, the problem with this suspension strap though is it does have a reputation for stretching. So over time, as you can see, it'll stretch out and touch the top of the headband, which, which will create a hotspot because the suspension strap will no longer be supporting all of the weight of this headphone. However, you can do a quick fix by unscrewing these screws here and lowering the suspension strap, or you could simply add some padding up here like I've done. Um, that is a less destructive solution um, if you aren't into taking your headphones apart. Other than that, you have a adjusting mechanism here, which is quite solid and would fit pretty much any size of head. So I don't have any issues with that. Furthermore, we've got really solid feeling metal hinges and the cup itself is made out of some sort of plastic that feels really solid. It is probably the best quality feeling plastic that I've ever had the chance to have in my hands. So that's a great thing to see. And you also have um, the typical Odyssey uh, back plate there, uh, which is again made out of the same polymer. Might be metal actually, uh, it's hard to tell. And you've got some foam dampening behind the grill. Other than that, you have some uh, mini XLR connectors. Uh, these are really solid connectors, as you can see by the cable here. Uh, and I have no doubt that these uh, have great longevity. However, the problem with that is it does make replacement cables less accessible and more expensive. Uh, you've also got a cable that is braided, as you can see, and probably one of the best quality stock cables that I've, I've ever come across, as well as a quarter inch plug. Now, uh, the pads themselves are huge pads, as you can see. Uh, they are a really soft memory foam and a pleather covering. And if you look at the inside, there is, or you can't really see it, but there is no phases. So this is a non-phased Odyssey headphone. Odysseys typically have a pretty bad rep when it comes to comfort because of the weight. And while this is definitely improvement over some other models, such as the Odyssey LCD X or the LCD 3 or the LCD 4, this is still on the heavier side. And um, I will say it's less comfortable than things like the Ananda or the Sundara or uh, a Focal headphone, uh, simply because of that weight. And the suspension strap does a much better job than the old headband of distributing weight, but it is still not as comfortable as a lighter headphone. So comfort, while it's good because of the memory foam pads, which are very plush, very comfortable, it still is a bit heavy. And the fact that you might get a hotspot due to the uh, headband stretching out and the, the pleather is not as comfortable as um, the real leather that some of the pricier Odyssey headphones have. Again, uh, comfort is really good, but not the best. Moving on to the uh, sound itself. This is a headphone that um, it took me a long time to review because I was really conflicted over what to really think of this headphone. And the reason for that is it has some really remarkable technical capabilities, but those technical capabilities are very much marred by the frequency response. So starting off with the bass. The bass on these, I would say, is quite flat, quite linear, and uh, well extended. It has a lot of control in the bass, a lot of detail. The dynamics are really great, and this is one of the hardest slamming planars you can get out there. And it has a real sense of physicality and impact to every note that a lot of planars, such as Heifman's, don't convey nearly as well. So the bass on this is really phenomenal. The bass quality is definitely better than something like the Heifman Sandara. Um, it does, uh, I guess, trade blows with the Focal LX. The LX, I think, has more slam, but the bass on the Odyssey LC2C seems more controlled and has seems to have more finesse uh, to me. So for my tastes, I think the Odyssey LC2C has some of the best bass uh, under the $1,000 price mark. Moving on to the mid-range. The mid-range on this headphone is probably the most flawed part of the Odyssey LCD 2C. The problem is this headphone's mid-range is simply bizarre. If you take something 
like the Focal Clear we have here, the Clear has a really balanced mid-range that is flat through the lower mids, as well as having that appropriate bump at the presence region to make up for the pin again, and it follows a Harman target quite closely, which is what I prefer. Now, the Odyssey LCD 2C, even if you're not a believer of the Harman target, it is clear to hear that this is a very dark headphone, and much of it is to do with the upper mid-range recession that this headphone has. Um, so around uh, 3K, this headphone has one of the biggest dips out of any headphone that I've ever seen. So what that does is it takes away from a lot of the kind of angelic quality or airy quality from vocals and instruments and makes everything very dark sounding. And for some recordings, that might be really good. However, for general listening, I found that on a lot of tracks that I listened to, it kind of seemed um, a bit dull and muted in the upper mids, which is a big problem for me because I like a bit of presence, a bit of, bit of sparkle there, but this headphone just simply doesn't, doesn't deliver that. Furthermore, uh, there is a clear 1K, 1.5K um, region emphasis that makes certain vocals come across as quite forward and almost a little bit shouty. So male vocals in particular will sound quite strong and present and maybe even a little bit too much so on this headphone, but female vocals are really lacking, I think. So that is one of the biggest flaws of this headphone and I think is the biggest thing holding this headphone back from uh, being I guess a top recommendation. The detail though in the mid-range is quite good. After EQing the mid-range to fit the Harman Tiger more closely, I found that the detail in this headphone is quite appropriate for its price. So although I wouldn't say it is the best for detail in the mid-range when compared to its competitors, such as the Focal Alex or the Ananda. However, it does do bass better than them, so it is a bit of a trade-off. Finally, for treble, the treble on this headphone is Again, uh, a point of contention, however, I think less so because the treble on this headphone would be what I describe as reasonably extended but on the darker side. So while it doesn't emphasize the treble nearly as much as something like the Ananda or the Alex, which I consider to be more neutral references, um, it does still maintain reasonable extension and it does maintain a good amount of presence there. So the treble I think isn't a big problem, it's just the fact that when you combine the slightly dark treble with the very dark upper mids, it does make this headphone sound a little bit too dark. Other than that, resolution of treble is good, but I would say that the resolution treble is probably the weakest part in terms of resolution throughout the headphone. I think the bass and the mid-range on this headphone is much more resolving for treble. It is clearly outdone by the Ananda as well as the Alex for detail and capabilities. So if you're someone that puts particular emphasis in that region of frequency response, this would not be a recommendation for you. Finally, for Soundstage, this is actually quite good. If Soundstage is wider than both the Ananda and the Lex, which are its primary competitors, I would say that it is nowhere near the level HD 800s, but among uh, things of its price, this is definitely one of the ones with a better soundstage. Also, one th other thing to note is that it does have quite a good amount of height. Um, I'd say that among soundstage height, this is probably only outdone by the oval shaped hyphens such as the hyphen Ananda, so you definitely get a really good sense of verticality and grandness with this headphone. Finally, uh, dynamics of this headphone is really good as you might have picked up by my description base. The impact and slam it has in the bass carries through the rest of its frequency response. This is a headphone that has a lot of weight, has a lot of uh, meat to every instrument, every vocal, every sound that it produces. And that's really good because um, a lot of headphones go for area kind of sound, such as the Ananda. However, this has a physicality that I think plays really well to a lot of instruments and sounds. So. If you're after a headphone that really has that dynamic capability, I would either look at this or the Focal LX. Overall, I'd say that this headphone is a headphone that almost has the potential to be a top headphone. It is really held back by two major flaws. One, it's uh, tuning, and two, it's treble resolution, which while is good and definitely appropriate for the price, it is outdone by the Ananda and the LX, the Ananda in particular, which resolves remarkably well in the treble. But on the flip side, this headphone has remarkable control, uh, impact, and bass detail. So if that's your main priority, this is definitely one of the best headphones.